Um, anybody like to use their wild cards? Y'all good? Okay, that's great. We're doing great times. Uh, yeah. So let's move on to the third question. Um, all right. So two more questions left to go. Um, while the provincial and federal governments have invested in transit projects, the operational costs of the TDC have been left to the city for the last 20 years, meaning that the share of costs paid by transit users for some of the highest in North America, which is true, you could look it up. Um, what, will your, what will your party do, this is the first question, what will your party do to help pay for the cost of operating the TTC? And where in Davenport would you propose we most need to provide improved TTC service? If you could be specific in your answers, that would be, that would help us a lot. And we'll start at the end of the table with Mary. Okay. Thank you. Well, look, I ride the TTC. <laughs> and I see that public transit crisis that we all seem to be experiencing every day. Uh, whether it's waiting for the subway to come uh, at any one of our stops and watching train after packed train go by, or how every every single hour is rush hour on Dufferin when you're waiting for the bus, uh, which I would say is probably a priority. Uh, but that's why I am really, really proud of the NDP's transit platform. Uh, it's one of the key components of our agenda for cities, which was announced right here in this Friday last week. The NDP has committed to a major overhaul of public transit in Toronto and across Ontario. We're going to make it a priority to fund the Toronto Relief Line. We're going to keep transit a public asset. And we're going to provide 50%, 50% of operational funding for municipal transit. All this means immediate improvements to services, and it means ridership growth and more affordable fares. But like, let, let's face it, right? The TTC is starved, and it is a direct result of cuts to services and funding over the past more than 20 years. It started under the Conservatives when they cut municipal transit operations, and 15 years later, 15 years later, the Wynn Liberals have continued to refuse Toronto's demand, a very clear demand, to restore that funding. Both of those parties have chronically underfunded our transit, and now I'm going to just be honest, they want to privatize it, and you have to just listen to Doug Ford's plan today and wonder where that's coming from. Um, and I'll, maybe I'll use my wild card to talk a bit more about that later. But the Liberals in their March budget also announced a plan to explore privatization of Toronto's transit system. That's shocking and appalling. We cannot afford to lose this public asset. 20 years ago, the Conservatives tried to do the same thing, and I think they're all using the same handbook, and you can count on me to fight to keep it a public asset. Uh, so thank you very much for the question, and um, I think that, you know, one of the things that's very important that we do is we continue to move people and that we continue to build and invest in the transit that commuters need most, and we are actually moving forward with an unprecedented transit build here in the GTHA. And uh, just this past spring, jointly with the federal government, we announced $9 billion in new funding for the TTC. And the gas tra tax transfers that this little liberal government introduced have generated almost $4 billion in revenue for Ontario's municipalities, giving them the opportunity to decide which projects to invest in and to, uh, and to uh, prioritize, prioritize that way. And so we've continued to make historic investments in new transit here in the city of Toronto uh, and across the province. And in the Toronto alone, we have invested around $14 billion for rapid transit projects. And in order to ensure that we continue building on this transit, we continue to ensure that the commuters are moving and that we're providing the convenient, uh, that transit is convenient for commuters, uh, we will be in discussions with the city of Toronto to determine whether provincial ownership of TTC lines could provide better transit services for residents in the GTHA and allow at the end of the day for better cost sharing between the province and the city of Toronto. So once again, I just want to clarify that we are exploring provincial ownership and that is not private ownership. Public transit will remain in public hands and that we're simply engaging with the city of Toronto to consider what options are actually available that can lead to the best results for the transit riders. And with regards to congestion, the lines that are a priority, what I always hear is the, and, and I know of are the Duff, is the Dufferin bus and now the Lansdowne bus as well as being overcrowded. So we want to make sure that we continue to invest 
Uh, the NDP plan to fund 50% uh, would actually cut the investments that we currently have in our budget proposing to fund TTC. Thank you. Kirsten? Um, this is one of the things I'm really excited to talk about from the Green Party perspective. Um, as we've discussed, riders fund 60% of the TTC's operating costs. That's huge. It leaves us vulnerable to fair increases. Uh, the Green Party of Ontario wants to listen to Toronto and support its decision to introduce road tolls on the DVP <coughs> and Gardner Expressway. It's estimated that this alone would generate $300 million in revenue. That's almost twice what the um, Liberal government is promising at $170 million. And, um, and to top up the $330 million that the NDP has promised, we're also looking into introducing parking levies, which in the greater Toronto area is estimated to bring in $2 billion worth of revenue. Um, together, this more than doubles the um, operating cost that is currently sitting at $1.6 billion and gives us a lot of room to make transit decisions that will better impact Torontonians. Um, and I think that it's the funding that the TTC really needs. And we'll wrap up with Ben. Uh, as I mentioned before, I am fully committed to public transportation, and so is the PC Party. Um, there's complex interplay between the City of Toronto and the province of Ontario with respect to the TTC. The fact that Doug Ford has been working at City Hall to address these issues um, really is an advantage because it, he understands the, both the municipal and the provincial perspectives. He would be the most uh, qualified leader to make decisions that would help both sides. In fact, yesterday they, we released the, uh, the policy and uh, we're not planning on investing 50% of, uh, of the subway infrastructure, but rather the whole thing uh, for maintenance. Um, we will commit another $5 billion for new subways and that's in addition to the $9 billion that's already available. Um, taking, the, taking on the provincial responsibility will also allow the province to finance the TTC in ways that the municipality can't. That involves mortgaging the subway's investments as an asset over the lifetime of the asset, and that can give the provinces, uh, use the province's balance sheet to get the uh, subway projects completed faster. We all know people are fed up with the being stuck in traffic for hours, being cramped on subways and streetcars and buses, and um, you know. We're also fed up with the planning process that treats communities in some neighborhoods like second-class second class citizens. Our message is that anyone who's frustrated with the transit crisis is that we will make a change. Help is on the way. We've just got to get the Liberals out of office and we can do the job properly rather than just make promises and be on that. Thank you. All right, let's go to Mary has a wild card. So we'll set the clock at 60 seconds. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah. And go. All right. Um, so I just wanted to follow up on a couple things because today was actually the day that Doug Ford announced his transit plan. And I thought I'd share a little bit with you because many people hadn't heard about it. And I just was kind of listening in before I, before I came here. So I wanted to recap a few things. Doug Ford is prioritizing the concerns, are prioritizing the downtown relief line, okay, and extending the Young Line north to Richmond Hill and looping the Shepherd Subway to the Scarborough Town Center at a cost of $16.1 billion. Ford has also, let's remember, pledged to cut uh, government spending by six billion and reduce taxes. <laughs> and the math just like, there's no way that math adds up. I just want to share that with you because I think there's some really unrealistic promises being made here. And what's, what's not being said, as I said earlier, is how they're going to pay for this. And I think this is absolutely about privatizing our public assets. And I just want to return to just one other thing that um, Christina said, which is, that you know, when they talk about doing exploring public ownership, um, to me that is a code word for exploring public par private partnerships. That is what it has always meant, and we saw it with public the public uh, sell up of hydro, and we're seeing it potentially here as well. So I just want to warn everybody. I, mean, I think this is ultimately this this election is going to be about the potential to privatize our public assets. Thank you. Um, I know I should use this opportunity to slam the NDP, but she said everything I was thinking about. Um, so I'm going to use this opportunity to say that in my um, obsession with numbers and billions of dollars, I forgot to also mention that the Green Party is committed to funding 50% of the TTC's operating costs. 
Um, so thank you for letting me get that second part in because you said it all um, for me. <laughs> I think, you know, in order to, to, to talk about the TDC, you have to know the TDC, so we have a bit of time. Can we just go from the bottom of the table at the top, just to describe to me your last experience, last time you took the TDC? What was the, what were the circumstances behind your trip? Mary, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. Last one. Um, probably taking the bus, I, it, I think the bus from Oakwood down. Um, and then taking getting on the subway. Okay. Um, and admittedly, because I'm not like I because I'm in this election mode, um, I didn't have to take it at rush hour, okay. uh, which was nice because I have many many times going to work and it has been absolutely abysmal. Okay. Kirsten. Um, I take the TTC, TTC most of the time, but right now it's bike season, so I'm biking everywhere. So I'm just going to take this opportunity to say about the last horrendous experience I had with the TTC. Quickly. And actually, Trevor was there with me. The, it was when the Bloor line um, shut down at rush hour, and because the Lansdowne bus only comes every 25 minutes, it took me two hours and 10 minutes to get from Bloor and Lansdowne to the University of Toronto. I think the lesson is don't go anywhere with Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> Christina? So I think the last time was uh, just a few weeks ago actually from just the constituency office to get down to Queen's Park and you know it's getting to that time where it's uh, about four something in the afternoon and there's all this rush hour so even just getting from here getting down to uh, to the link to get onto the onto the U was uh, was really a little bit of a nightmare. So again, just in terms of uh, the rush hour um, congestion that happens in the city. Federico. Well, I generally drive, ride my e-bike around town, so I haven't taken the TTC for uh, for a couple of weeks. But the, I tried today. I wanted to come here today, but the Bloom Festival was on, and the lineups were way too long, so I wasn't even able to get in. So we had to go back, grab the car, and come. Um, okay, so one more question, and this is the last chance to use your wild card cards. And has anybody exhausted their wild cards? You have. <laughs> so we eager to use the wild card. Um, okay, somebody could actually sell you a wild card. <laughs> um, just give me the money and I'll get it to you later. Um, uh, question four, I think, is probably the most uh, dynamic um, issue um, in the catchment and maybe one of the most contentious as well. And um, it involves the Diamond Rail overpass that's planned. Um, it's, uh, yeah, so it's, it's one of the most contentious uh, projects in Davenport. Um, it's the it's overpass is gonna be uh, running along the rail line used by the GO trains that head up to Barrie. Um, the current plans for constructions of a 1.5 kilometer bridge Starting south at Bloor and ending north way up at Davenport, it's going to begin next year. Uh, that's the proposal. Um, there will be construction of the public realm. Uh, th th those components, um, uh, as it relates to the public realm, will begin once the over overpass construction is complete. So, two two part question um, again. Uh, what do you believe is the best plan for this project? Uh, should it fall to you? And whatever your plan, how would you propose the project be made more beneficial to local Davenport residents who live, work, and play beside the, pro the project related either to um, public realm components or the general construction of, uh, of the bridge? And for question four, we're going to start with at the end of Federico Sanchez. When I saw the, uh, the questions that were going to be asked, I was actually quite saddened that the major issue facing Davenport, as you were testing to, um, wasn't being addressed, and, and that was the, the tunnel. That's, that's the option that I personally support. Uh, when I looked into why the tunnel option was not chosen by Metrolinx, I find the very little information and, and actually no evidence. The only thing I found was that the expense was higher than, than the bridge. And that was about it. I'm an advocate of long-term thinking, and quite often long-term thinking involves uh, larger upfront costs, but in the long term, they're cheaper. Uh, the tunnel would open up green space. The pathway could easily be accommodated on the top of the tunnel. The green space would increase public enjoyment, land value, and in turn, security. Um, the uh, valuable real estate, uh, real estate would be opened up on the main roads passing through Davenport as a result. That would increase the taxation base for Davenport, both in land value and in the commercial taxes. This would end up with, uh, with money being going back into and effectively paying for the cost of the tunnel. Maintenance on the tunnel is, is more than likely uh, less costly than for the bridge, and the tunnel would increase the need for electrification in the long run as well. 
I would like to see this option fully explored with estimates of the real cost, both in the tunnel and the bridge options. And I'd like to ask my, I, I have to ask myself why the tunnel option was not fully explored, ever. I decided to find out what Christina Martins had said at Queen's Park. Found out that she, I looked through the public records and found out that she had only said five things over the past four years on public transportation, and none of them addressed the tunnel whatsoever. Now, I have not any experience with Parliament just yet, and so I need to ask Christina Martins why she, what she was doing in terms of the tunnel uh, option and why it wasn't fully explored. This is your issue, this is your concern. I know that there's a large amount of people in the riding who are very concerned about this. This is the reason why I am at this debate. This debate. It's this question right here. It, I, I feel that it's my duty to represent the interests of the people in Davenport. Um, I will bring up this issue over and over again at Queen's Park until I get an answer, a satisfactory answer, about why it wasn't addressed and what the actual costs are. I'll be shining a light on the interests and concerns of the people of Davenport. I will be giving you a voice. That is my role as an MPP, and that is what I will do. So, so thank you very much. So uh, uh, the Davenport Diamond Project has been uh, the uh, event, the project that my office and myself have worked on the most since I was elected as MVP to represent Davenport in June 2014. And. Uh, to say that I only spoke five times in the House on this, I think I'd have to go back and check because I'm not sure, but I know that I have about 15 letters that I wrote to ministers of transportation, to ministers of environment and climate change on transportation on the Davenport Diamond. And it has been through collaboration and working with the community that we are where we are today with this project where I think that we have gone beyond opposing the project, but we've actually embraced it as best as we can to ensure that moving forward now that we will actually get the best damn bridge, which is what I said way back in 2015, my exact words at the time, so that we can actually get the best damn project for Davenport. And that we're not just, and I'm going to use Kevin Putnam's words here, that we're not just elevating the tracks, but that we're elevating the community. And that's exactly what we have done I when working agree. with... I don't agree. It's and that is what we have, and that is what we have, and that is what we have worked together on as a community to ensure that instead of the normal 1% of the cost of the project that are fed back into the public realm, that we have 2%. So we are perhaps the only project in, this, in the province, in the city, that has doubled the investment for public realm benefits, which is what we are working on today in very close uh, collaboration with all of the uh, advocates that many of them here in this room tonight to ensure that we continue to uh, to bring the most community benefits to this to this uh, to this project here in Davenport. Thanks. Fed has his wild card, so we'll let him respond. 